as you see in front of you, I have the parts for a tiny whip build. This is going to be uh, one of them that I take to the Invitational this year, and hopefully it's uh, hopefully it'll turn out well for me. Hopefully I can do this fairly quickly. I did all the soldering beforehand so that I could cut down on uh, cut down on the time that it takes to to do this video. So I actually uh, upgrade, especially for coming straight from a inductor the. Um, Inductrix FPV, that guy right there. Uh, there's definitely some improvements you need to make. One of them definitely being uh, the pigtail connector. It needs to be a lot bigger so that you can fit these uh, what we call power whoop connectors. So if you're coming straight from a, a stock Inductrix FPV, um, definitely, I mean the camera's good. You'll need to buy a 3D printed mount. I know Tiny Whoop has them, uh, tinywhoop.com, to fit the camera and the VTX, because you don't want to keep this canopy. It is ungodly heavy. And that's that's the key to a lot to these tiny whoop builds, having a good one. Uh, if you have a good tiny whoop build, you should be able to hover uh, somewhere around 30% throttle. And you definitely won't be able to do that with this brick, this tank of a canopy here. Uh, so I definitely suggest either, like I said, getting the the mount for the Cameron VTX or just getting a new camera altogether. And my favorite by far is the FX900 TW cam. So like I said, I've done all the soldering beforehand. I've got the pigtail, the upgraded pigtail, uh, the new camera. Uh, I've actually, this is a, a camera I had on another build. So it's got this T-style dipole cam. I'm not sure how this is gonna hold up in a race uh, with, uh, with you know, three, four, five other pilots. I know bef before when I when I was using it, it, it didn't seem to be too much of an issue with with other pilots in the air with me, but we'll see. Especially if there's better frequency management, it might help out. So I'm definitely saving some weight there, which is good, and I definitely need weight to be saved because uh, I've got these LEDs mounted. Uh, these are pretty sweet. I've got a set of blue. Okay, here we go. Quick uh, parts overview. As I showed, I've got the Inductrix FPV board. Still, the uh, the front runner in angle mode racing for a tiny whoop beta flight boards are catching up, but Inductrix FPV is still the way to go. And with the Invitational closing in so rapidly, I don't want to change uh, so drastically to another board. So I'm just going to stick with the Inductrix FPV. And I've got a uh, I've got a secret sauce here that 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 might help me out, give me an, an extra edge. And I'm running the FX900 TW cam. This board I have the, as I said, the T-Style uh, VAS dipole from Tiny Whoop. Saves some weight and shouldn't be too big of an issue as long as frequencies are managed correctly. Uh, we'll be racing in fours, I believe. Uh, we should be good. And I definitely need that weight to be saved. I'm not a big LED guy, uh, but for the the race, I, I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna make it. Uh, I'm gonna follow suit with everyone else, and we'll put LEDs on here. Uh, I've, I'm using the the Batmech. I wasn't too sure about which canopy to use. I, I mean, I, I don't really think too much about the canopy. I don't like I don't like to paint things. I just think it adds too much weight. So I've never put too much thought into the canopy. But after Josh Evans did his signature whoop, he, he made some good points about this Batmech canopy. That it's really got some hard edges, especially here along the the, uh, the corners where it mounts to the frame. Uh, that really keep it sturdy on the frame. I've had a lot of them pop off, but this one, oh, that one just popped off. But uh, this one seems really sturdy. And then definitely with all the hard lines, like he, like he mentions, the ears and all along the sides here, it seems really strong. So have some high hopes for this one. I'm using the cockroach frame. Here is my secret sauce. So I've got some motors that I'm testing out. I absolutely love these things. I'm running four blade, Yashin props. If you're coming from the stock Inductrix FPV, it has these very tiny mounting holes and those screws aren't big enough to hold down a, a camera mount or just hold down uh, the board itself. So you want to make sure you get some extra hardware, uh, the, the bigger screws so that they don't slip down in the middle through the hole of the, um, of the rubber grommets there. The two tools that I use, I guess, mainly are some nice tweezers. That's it. Those are tweezers right there. 
and a little screwdriver just so you can screw down the all the the hardware and mount the the camera and the flight controller and stuff like that that is every oh we got uh, this is an alternate to welders e6000 that's the same stuff it works great uh, i just use this because it's easy to find around me you can find it at walmart or target or a hardware store it works great i keep a bag of toothpicks on the back end and i just use that to apply it uh, since this is the cockroach frame it doesn't need too much reinforcement josh evans suggests especially if you're running an acro on this thing uh, to put it on the the bottom plate here of the the battery uh, the little battery mount but um I, I won't be running acro on this, so I think I'll be good. I'm not going to add any welders. I'm just going to use this to hold down the LEDs, hold them in place. So that's a quick parts overview. That's really it. So let's go ahead and get this thing built. This one I don't think is damaged anywhere. Let's make sure. Give it the old twist test. If you hear any cracking, that means there's a, a split somewhere. Seems pretty level. Looks good there. Make sure you have your frame oriented correctly. This is the back end right here because that's where the battery hits the uh, the little clip here. On the battery hits the, the bracket. So this is the front and on the Inductrix FPV, the motors spin outward. Be careful not to twist these too hard so that you don't pull the motor wires out of the the can okay there we go now let's move on to this is gonna be tricky with these LEDs because they're so the wires are so hard you gotta find a way to make sure it mounts correctly so before you mount this onto the board you'll want to put your grommets on it get them in there okay then we'll find uh, the back side of the the frame you can see your arrow on the on the board points forward so now I'm gonna take my pigtail and shove it down in that gap way in the back and now I gotta figure out something with these like I said I don't usually use LEDs so I gotta make sure I do this in a reasonable way so I'm gonna stick them down in the same gap. Once you get everything through the holes that you want them through, start to gently place the, the flight controller down, get those rubber grommets, those soft mounts, if you will, onto the uh, little pins that hold them on. I had problems before with a, uh, a cockroach, and I think it's just because sometimes how the boards mount, they're not very, not completely flush uh, so when I get them on there I like to kind of hold the corners and bend the frame around a little bit just to make sure that it's it's fully on there don't do it too hard just nice and easy here's where my tweezers come into play it just makes it easier grab the screw I'm gonna do the one in the back and the front first so I'm not fighting my camera to get them in place just hold the screw in place with your tweezers, start twisting. Next, we're gonna put down the camera. And I haven't tested this yet, I'm going to very soon, but I actually pick up my receiver antenna. Be, be very gentle. <laughs> and kind of straighten it out as best you can. I stick it straight up, and then when I'm done mounting this, I'm gonna fold that receiver antenna up over top of my camera. I think it helps with range. I mean, it makes sense, right? Instead of being slammed underneath the camera and wedged in between that and the board, I think it helps with range. But I'll do a test just to make sure so I can prove it. Sometimes these camera mounts have a hard time reaching both holes uh, so don't screw it down on one end all the way right away just kind of get it in place so that the screw is held and then uh, do the other end just to make sure it reaches and then my 
antenna will just kind of sit <clears throat> right in that gap there. All right, so board and camera are mounted. As I said, I'm gonna take this receiver antenna, pull it straight back, and just bend it right over the top there, nice and easy. So now that all, all this will fit nice and easily right underneath the canopy. Okay, now let's, uh, let's start to clean up the back here. Let's get these motors plugged in. It just goes to the, the nearest what are they called? MOSFETs. This goes into the closest one. I tuck these motor wires underneath the, the frame here. But as I said, I'm not used to LEDs. So let me figure out a good way to route these and then I'll... When you're stringing stuff like this, just be very careful not to just rip things through. One, you could either damage whatever you're trying to you know route through or you could uh, you could rip something off of the board and you don't want that yeah that looks pretty cool underneath the canopy i like where this first one is i might try to get them up here on the ears because uh, i want to i really want it to you know dude this thing broke already Oh, come on. That's an easy fix, though. I should have done that beforehand. Uh, I learned this from, from Ashton. If you use... So another use for welders or E6000 is to uh, paint the canopy, this little corner, right? These corners right here. That'll keep it uh, keep it nice and strong. I've actually fixed ones that were already broken, like this one, actually. It was already broken. Put that welders on there, and now it's really tough. So, yeah, I'm a believer now. Thanks, Ashton. I'm a believer. I'll paint that canopy later a little bit with some E6000. I'll show that at the very end. Now this stuff uh, usually tends to just spew out when you take the cap off, but it's it's very easy to clean up. You just kind of rub it in between your fingers, or just you know, it just as it dries out, as you rub it, it uh, it just it kind of balls up and it'll go away. So don't worry if it gets on your table. So let's go ahead and crack this bad boy open. I found if I kind of try to stretch it out, it doesn't come out as, as hard. Now I want to minimize my use of this glue because anything you add to this whoop will obviously, remember ounces equal pounds, pounds equal suck. So I want to put as little as I need to. It's really hard to hold these ones down because of how hard this wire is. Another reason why I prefer the lighter weight LEDs. I'll just hold that in place and paint just a little all along here. Just routing it back. Again, you don't want to use a lot. That ought to do. Okay, LEDs. Oh, I'm done with it. LEDs are down. While I've got my glue out, might as well fix this really quick. So you should just, you should probably just do this on any canopy you get. Let's take a tiny little dab. Be sure not to cover the hole, but get on the inside and the outside. Again, you're adding more weight, so be careful how much you actually use. If you are using a brand new set of props, uh, I learned this trick from, from Cody, uh, from Tiny Whoop. Just have a spare, uh, an old motor sitting around and uh, just mount mount this brand new prop onto this motor, push it all the way down, and then easily, you know, pry it back off. Uh, because I actually have damaged brand new motors by sticking on these brand new props. And if you push too hard, uh, you can damage this motor shaft. If you don't know which way your props spin, uh, you can either hover over top of them, blow down on them a little bit, and you can see which way they spin. Or you can just imagine, imagine there's like a little, I don't know, just something in between these props. And if you spin it, it's gonna grab that whatever, like an M&M or whatever, and it's gonna spin it with it. So that's that's the direction this prop spins. This is a clockwise direction prop. On the inductor that PV board, your motors spin outwards towards the center. 
red and blue is clockwise black and white is counterclockwise yeah, so you can figure out the rest just put them on so I'm gonna go ahead and mount that on here boom there we go and let's give her a quick battery test oh I saw this question too with these cockroach frames the battery mount is a little bit bigger than normal uh, so these batteries aren't very snug I've, uh, there were some different suggestions the easiest thing you can do is just unfold these foil flaps here a little bit just spread them out and stick it in there even if you want after you get it on there you can even spread out the foil on the far end to really hold it in there I mean that's that's as secure as a fit as, as you'll need so here we go no smoke I think that's gonna look sweet in the dark I can't wait to see this thank you guys so much for for joining me today and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below if you liked this video make sure you drop a like uh, comment tell me what you thought and if you feel ever so inclined you know drop a subscribe in there I've got another week or I think yeah another week or so and it'll be one year on YouTube for me so I'm trying to trying to do what I can to hit a thousand subscribers before that year mark that'd be pretty epic again thank you guys for joining me we will see you next time